Yo guys, welcome back to part 2 of how to build a strong seal deck. If you missed the first part, make sure to watch it first or you will lack some important information. As mentioned in part 1, this video will give you some general rules of making a good sealed deck. But of course, there are other ways of building a great deck. Alright, let's go on. We stopped at the part where I decided which colors we should play. After you made your decision of the colors, you have to lay down your cards and check your mana curve. And that's step 4, the famous mana curve. The mana curve is extremely important. It displays how your deck will ramp during the game. You should avoid playing too much cards with comfort mana costs of 2 or less and all the with comfort mana costs of 6 or higher. The perfect mana curve for a sealed deck is spiking in the middle. That means most of your cards should be cards with comfort mana costs of 3 or 4. If you play too many cards with lower mana costs, you run the risk to lose the late game because your low mana cost spells can't compete against the spells of your opponent. It's the same the other way around. If you play too many high mana cost spells, your opponent will probably overrun you until turn 6. There there might be pools where some exceptions can be made, but more often you should have a balanced mana curve with a spike in the middle. As you can see, I got a perfect mana curve. I play two one drops, which will be good, even drawn in the late game, and one powerful six drop. So let's move on to step 5. Spells, creatures and lands. A good working seal deck contains at least 15 creatures, but in most of the cases it's better to play some more, let's say between 15 and 18 creatures. Always remember, you will win your games by dealing damage with your creatures. That's the game plan, so you will need damage on the board. It's very extraordinary to build a control deck or even a good working aggro deck out of your pool. Not because it wouldn't be good, but because you won't have the fitting cards for those decks. After setting up your best creatures you will add some spells to your deck. Removal is absolutely important. Sealed is all about value by trading. Trading two cards for one is always a good thing in sealed. Try to do good trades with creatures and spells and you will win most of your games. To sum up, your final deck should contain 15 to 18 creatures and 6 to 8 spells, so that you got in total 22 or 23 cards in your deck. Don't play more cards, you should focus on your most powerful cards in your pool and cut the rest. More often you won't have 23 playables and you have to fill up your remaining spots in your deck with some OK cards. So what about the lands? Let's move to step 6, mana. Normally you will play between 17 and 18 land cards. This is a lot, but you will need these lands to make sure you can ramp safely. The distribution of your lands depends on the colors you are playing. Therefore, you should set up your deck and sort your spells by their color. There are two things you should remember by filling your deck with mana. Some spells will need mana earlier and some spells will need more mana of one specific color. In this case we have a balanced need of colored mana. We do have some early white drops and some early green drops and also one white card that costs 2 white mana and one green card that costs 2 green mana. So what to do in such a case? We have 17 slots for lands, so you have to decide which color you want to have more urgent. I decided to add a forest because being screwed on white is still better as to be screwed on green. Green will give us at least some good broad presents and can carry us better into the late game. So putting all pieces together and drawing a start hand shows us that this deck is probably pretty slow. We won't do anything before turn 3. But you shouldn't worry about speed in the sealed format too much. Sealed is extremely slow. Well, this depends also on the current set, but if you compare it to other sets, it's really slow. Some players tend to let their opponent go first to draw an extra card. So, as I mentioned before, sealed is about card advantage, good trading and value. Let's come to step 7, Splash. It is absolute legit to go for a splash if you have the bombs for it. You shouldn't splash if the card won't win you the game. Splashing is always a big risk of being screwed, so think of it twice. So let's say your main colors are green and white and you want to play Tamiyo and adding a blue splash. This is absolutely fine because this card will give you a hilarious advantage during the game and it's worth the risk of being screwed. If you go for a splash, watch out for some double lands or some other mana fixing, like Cryptolith, Fragment, Warped Landscape and so on. You should play one mana source for every card of the splash color. So if if your deck only runs Tamayo, playing a Cryptolith Fragment and one island would be enough. Alright, let's go to step 8. Sideboard. If you feel like your deck isn't working too good, you have always the chance to swap as many cards as you want in game 2 and 3 during each match. The whole pool you opened will be your sideboard, so make sure to keep in mind some good hate cards that will probably help you against specific decks. Root Out, Watcher in the Web, Spring Sage Ritual, these cards are all really good hate cards. Well, and that's it. And if you don't do too much mistakes uh, while playing, you'll probably win the next pre-release event or the next Grand Prix trial or whatsoever. Sealed is a really 
exciting format. No match will be like the match before, you will always have new cards to build different decks. Some people claim that seal is a format which depends on luck the most. I see that some pools have some ridiculous bombs in it, but the skills in building a really strong deck in seal are way more important than just open up good cards. A good sealed player will always create an awesome deck, it doesn't matter which kind of cards he opens. A good player will always be able to defeat a weak or not so experienced player. That is what makes Seal to an extreme difficult but also exciting format. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this will help you at your next sealed event. Remember, I don't claim to be a pro gamer. I surely do some mistakes myself when building a sealed deck, otherwise you could watch me play at the Pro Tour which isn't the case, obviously. But I tried my best to give you some general advices which I learned during my time as a Magic player. If you have some further suggestions or tips, make sure to write them down into the comments. If you like this video and want me to do more of this kind, hit the like button. Moreover, you can follow me on Facebook and I would be glad if you check out my other videos. In diesem Sinne, thank you for watching. Beware of the kittens. I'm out of this.